Members, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan, and you have five minutes, Deputy, and I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Okay, thank you. The um, first point I'd like to make, I think, is that it's almost beyond belief that we don't have a state-of-the-art health system when we look at the budget. 13.626 billion, with a further 397 in capital funding. Um, I'd like to make a general point first, and that is what is good and what is excellent in our health service. And I think particularly people with cancer, um, I think the advances in heart, people with heart ailments, transplants, bypass operations, and stent procedures, I think there's excellent medical care and quality service there. Um, I would like to make one point about those with long-term illnesses, and it's because of my involvement with a friend of mine who's in her sixth year of motor neuron, and I do think that there's a, a great need for coordination of services there, because I know that her main carer spends so much time making calls to a variety of services, whether it's for OT, whether it's for palliative care, physiotherapy, home care, medical care, or um, care with, with continence issues, um, instead of just having one call to a central person who could do that. We know that we have a two-tier system, and overall I think most people would like a system that's going to be fair, where people will be treated equally and according to their needs and not according to their ability to pay. And when I look at the private sector, um, back in the 70s I bought into private health insurance, and I'm not too sure why I did, but anyway I did, and I paid into it for over 40 years. And thankfully I've been very healthy, so I've only had to avail of it on three occasions for very minor procedures. So the health um, private sector has got quite a lot of money um, from me, and that's fine. But when I look at that system, and you, in that system when you go for an appointment, it's speedy, it's prompt, you arrive in the hospital again, it's efficient, it's speedy, you know, the procedure happens, and the aftercare equally and I can't understand why that can't happen in our public health service as well that we can't have those prompt appointments and speedy delivery of services we know that there are still waiting lists and we also know there are waiting lists in A&E but I want to acknowledge the improvements in the Matter Hospital the new Matter Hospital with the, the new um, A&E system there um, you know, you look at the, the peak of the health insurance market, 2.3 million at one stage in 2008, um, and we're told about the numbers who have dropped and the percentage decrease from 50.9 to 45.8. And I would have to say one point about private health insurance. I think you need a degree to work your way through all the various plans and programmes that are available in order to be cost effective. Now, regardless of the pros and cons of the proposed charges or the whole philosophy behind private, uh, in, private health insurance, I find the reaction of the private insurers, OK, it's predictable, but I don't think it's very helpful. You know, they've said that this is going to lead to an increase of over 30% in health insurance premiums. They're saying there's going to be declining the number of people taking out health insurance. Aviva call it the, that it's the insurers simply cannot bear the cost to remain in business. VHI is the single biggest challenge facing the market. Leia sp speaks of it as the significant threat to affordability and sustainability of the private medical insurance. But at least Glow Healthcare did ask that initiatives could be uh, explored that won't drive up premium costs and would entice your young people in. So, I mean, this is the, the we're asking. I would ask the industry to look at the wastages in the private healthcare also, and that there will be more efficient use of their resources. Resources. Because looking at their figures, 2012, 2.3 billion is what they took in, and their only answer to all of this is to increase people's premiums. Um, and I want another point about the outsourcing of the operation and administration of the scheme by the HSE to another party. And I'm just wondering if this is going to mean will it be profit-driven instead of person-driven? Um, primary care centres has been a, a major issue and I'm still waiting for an update on the proposed one for uh, the Summerhill area in Dublin 1. Um, the Library and Research Services, the, the, the included section from May Van Wren from Trinity Centre for Health Policy and Management, and she was looking at the impact of demographic change. The number of people over 85 will more than double by 2021, and in the age group 74 to 84 years, that will increase by over a half. So I think it's vital that we get preventative measures right, and I think there's an awful lot more that we could do on prevention. And we look at those illnesses that can be prevented, heart, diabetes, and certain cancers to name some. We know about the massive cost from alcohol abuse and alcohol misuse and yet the various recommendations and suggestions from the health um, area on this are just not being taken on by the government. I, like others, attended a presentation by the Alzheimer's Society and we know about the small amounts of funding that can improve people's chances and, and keep them out of the system for as long as possible. Um, again, I'd like to make a point about carers, that investing in carers, it's an investment in community care, and it helps families and communities and those people who want to stay at home. 
for a you, dignified you, living. You've been speaking for almost five minutes, okay, Deborah Sullivan, but, but, but we're not stuck for time, so you yeah. can continue okay, on to... I just have another one or two points to make. So I think for as long as possible, if people want to remain in their community, remain within their family, even on purely economic terms, it makes much more sense. I think there are pressures on the maternity services in Dublin, and that, I don't think that's being taken seriously. Um, and I think it's actually a danger to certain women's health at the moment because the services are so overstretched. Um, I do think that there are more urgent matters that we should be looking at instead of what we're looking at in this particular debate. But the last point I'd make is that, like everybody else, we don't want a further burden on the public health system. Thank you. Thank you,